Hey, everybody. We are back for One Grung Above, and we're excited to play. Before we get started, though, I want to talk a little bit about uh, something exciting that's happening right now as we speak. Um, they are loading into the Dungeon Masters Guild uh, a short four-page supplement that I created along with the, the brilliant, brilliant design work of Emmy Tanji here in the Wizards of the Coast offices. Inside this uh, four-page thing, you will find vital information about our uh, Grung characters here, some brief uh, synopses of, of who they are and what they're about. In addition to that, uh, exciting, there are the Grung racial traits that I developed for when I created these characters. Um, now, uh, I have to put one caveat on that, and that is, unless I plan on dying by Jeremy Crawford's hand sometime soon, those are officially unofficial, and there's a disclaimer at the bottom that explains that. <laughs> you are not allowed to use those in D&D Adventures League play. If you want to go to town with those in your own home games, however, get crazy, go nuts. Uh, have some fun, just like we're doing here. So that's, all, that's what it's all about anyways. Um, so, last time we played, uh, our intrepid Grung uh, woke up uh, tied to stakes in a goblin encampment. The Batiri goblins had captured them after they had uh, tried to flee off into the jungle. And um, with the help of Mia, the uh, albino dwarf uh, mentor of, uh, of Dot and Khan, um, rolling into the middle of the goblin camp and their own ingenuity, the Grung and Mia managed to escape, killing many goblins as well as a rather large dinosaur um, who got head punched like a camel in Conan. Who got <laughs> <laughs> That's right, I forgot about that. <laughs> Uh, after that, there was a, uh, a short blurry trip through the jungle. Uh, Mia blanked out on the whole thing, but eventually they got to a cavern, a hidden cavern, um, which was kind of an, uh, an outpost for uh, the Grung. And there they laid to rest um, the body of Cabulos, the red Grung, who uh, played with uh, these other Grung in the prelude uh, during the Stream of Annihilation. And... Um, at the same time, got attacked by zombie dinosaurs, and chaos ensued once more. Um, luckily, Mia woke up and was there to help his uh, help the grung out uh, because they desperately needed it. Um, so here we are uh, in the cave, and most of the party is damaged to one degree or another. Um, Bangarang, of course, is just risen from unconsciousness, um, and you guys. Uh, can hear there's some scuffling sounds in the back um, over the over the water uh, in the rooms there that are new to this place um, and then they stop and so like am I still on the ground like being fed the the healing potion for the most part yeah yeah you're just like your your eyes have fluttered open and you're kind of looking up and and wondering what the heck hit you? <laughs> ma'am, thank you. The, okay, sorry. No, I was just going to say, ma'am, thank you. I, what are those noises? Go I'm going to start pulling out the whistle stick and communicating. What I see is I look off in that direction. Crease, what do I see? What do you see? So you just see the room. You don't see anything making sound from where you are here. Uh, it is uh, it's dark over there. Um, and so you'd have to uh, get a bit closer before you could uh, make something out. I will get a bit closer so, in order to see. All right. So the room goes yeah. in about, um, I don't know, 60 feet. And then there is a pool of water uh, across the pool of water, which um, is about, I don't know, 40 feet across. There is a, a chamber that looks like it's been constructed of stone, unlike this cavern here, which is very much more natural. Okay, can I uh, find a stalagmite and pop down behind it and kind of peer off and like to see if I can get a better look at whatever is in whatever wherever that that noise is coming from? Just trying to get a beat on it. Um, okay, sure. Um, 
So uh, make me a perception check, please. Uh, it's going to be a 15. So on one end of the room, you can see that there is a door, like a wooden door. And I don't know how many wooden doors you've personally seen in your, in your grung life, but it's this thing that's built into the wall that's not made of the same structure as everything else, and it's got a, a big metal handle on it. And how many caves have I been in in my grung life? A couple of caves, but most of them are like what's behind you. And no doors, yes. No, okay. no doors, doors, uh, uh, occasionally you'd like, you know, like you guys might have seen doors in like small campsites where they built like something like this using a cloth tent, right? But this is made okay. out of not cloth. It's not, okay, so not gonna, cloth opening. It's <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna whistle back uh, just real quick fragments like cave, erect, wood, panel, Ma'am, uh, there's an er erect wood panel in the back of this cave. That we should hide. We should be stealthy and hide. If that's I okay, pick her up. Whoa. Go find out what it is. Push. Go. Oh. And then I turn to Zamia. Ah, but da Daddy, here you go. Ah, where we be? Uh, there, there's a cave, and uh, I, we, uh, there's zombies and dinosaurs, uh, and I have the little ones looking uh, to see what's going on. How, how me get here? We walked. Oh, <laughs> did, have, did me have one me naps? <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> I do some of the best thinking in me naps, not. <laughs> <laughs> Let's follow. Come, come. I grab his uh, loincloth, I don't know, whatever you're wearing. <laughs> 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 Skirt, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> mm. All right. I will very quickly hop away. Um, I'm I'm gonna try to hide how hurt I really am because Ma'am told me to go do something. But sure. Uh, 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 and I'll get <laughs> I'll get over. And I'll say, Bleep, is this is this the door oh. or wooden panel? Is this a wooden panel? And I'll. Uh, so I'll go. Um... I should have said a, a rec tree. Um, so I'll go, uh, and I'll pull out one of my salves, and I'll hand it to you. And then uh, I will point with the whistle stick towards the uh, tree in the back of the cave. So from here, you're kind of looking at it, and um, you're still on the other side of the water, from what I can tell. Um, okay. So you, you have a couple of options, of course. Um, there's You can cross the water. You can climb the walls. You, you decide how you want to well, do that. Well, in, in true, uh, true... Or you can just stay fashion, here, and that's fine, too. Well, in true blue fashion, I will, uh, I will probably take the ceiling. However, I would like to take my whistle stick and tap into the water a few times to see if I disturb anything or anything responds to the disturbance. Okay, so you're like, sploosh, sploosh, sploosh. Yeah, I'm basically just like testing the water to see if uh, if anything else responds to it. Spoosh, spoosh, spoosh. This, this is very smart. The last time we put anything in there, it turned into a dinosaur. Good idea. You're not. You're not. Nothing seems to be happening. Okay, then I will. Uh, I will latch onto the wall and start to make my way across to the door. Okay, so you Stealthily. start to do your thing as you go up the wall and around the ceiling and down over by the door, and you kind of cross around and then you. Can, do you want to come like at to the door from the, the door. wall? Yeah, okay. That's exactly what I was picturing in my head, actually. <laughs> so you're basically clinging to the ceiling, looking down at the door uh, mm -hmm. where you are. I would like to feel around. I would like to inspect the door, feel around the edges, kind of like see what I can see if I peer through any of the uh, around, like where it's... Um, where it's coming in to see if I can either see through it or if I see any mechanisms around sure. it. And I'd like to just be sticky on the wall as I go around inspecting it for traps, moving it around. Maybe I'll take my dagger out and run it through the crease along the side as well. Make me an investigation check. Knowing he's going to go and investigate this thing before he gets too far away from me, I would, uh -huh. I would love to offer help. Okay. So you offer some encouraging words. 
Okay, that will be a, a 19. Okay, so you're looking at this door and um, you don't see any strange mechanisms in the cracks of the door or in the door itself or even on the handle. Okay, uh, so I will do uh, the whistle stick across uh, the pond and uh, relay that information about uh, wood not working or no trap we can do or should I investigate? And I'll pull out mine as I wave over the other two and I'll respond with careful, slow, open it. So we've been walking towards them this whole time and they've been staring at the door. So I'm right behind Bangarang's head. I'm right here. <laughs> Go inside. <laughs> well, there I didn't I didn't follow him, so he's kind of across the way. I'm oh, okay. I'm alerting him. But yeah. Yeah, there's a pool between us. <laughs> I will startle. <laughs> oh, yes. Momentarily. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Open it. Open it. Do I know what this whistle talk is? Am I familiar with it? You you don't know uh, what they're what, what it's doing, but basically okay. you you get the All idea right. that it's some kind of a communication okay. device that they use. Um, to you, it looks like they've taken a, a a wooden flute of some kind and they bored holes in it, and there's a and there's a leather thong attached to it, and they kind of wing gotcha. around with the thing. You could also probably use it as a musical instrument if you wanted to, you know, play it as a flute. However, you wanted to do that. So real fast before I do, I'm gonna go. Um, I'm going to whistle back, like, are you sure we shouldn't maybe rest for a minute to catch our breath? At that and point, when you do that, you hear, a, you hear a scraping sound on the other side of the door. And I stop in the middle of it, and I'm like... And I'll take a cautious step back and, and motion for my lady and her friend to step back as well, just kind of. Does it sound like it's approaching the door or does it sound like it's just scraping like, like somewhere in the depths of the whatever's beyond that? Uh, it sounds like something on the other side is making a noise, not necessarily near the door. And I couldn't see past, the, like I couldn't see through any of the cracks, anything moving around there, anything? No. Okay. I'm gonna... Uh, re-pull out my bow and be at the ready and just kind of give give a nod to bleep and just be okay. ready for anything coming through that door. Okay. Oh, I'm gonna <laughs> can I can I oh here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna sticky down onto the door. All right. And I am oh. going to uh I'm gonna pull out one of the scimitars. I'm going to uh, unlatch, like I'm going to turn the handle and I'm going to push back against the wall so that the door opens and I can pull the scimitar back and it slides back uh, as stealthily as I can using the door for my, uh, for a hiding place. You're just going to ride the door? <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> okay, so, um, hmm, make me a, uh, a strength athletics check if you would be so kind it's canted what's canted the die oh then, re is, then re -roll. Is bleep i just wanted to say it first yeah, that's is cool bleep 30 feet away from me uh yes i would i'm gonna give him the most inspiring look and offer him help on this check <laughs> All right, that'll be a 15. <laughs> okay, cool. So you push the door, and you guys watch as the door opens out, a wave, and bleep kind of disappears on the other oh, side. it goes that as, way. As the door opens up. And you guys can kind of see inside-ish, um, but uh, it's dark. It's really Wait, dark. did it, did I come back in towards the room? Like no. I came back towards them, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, okay. the the wall is like this, um, and they're out there. Okay. So when the door opened, it opens like this away from them. Gotcha. 
Okay. So it opens I up. I was to, under the impression we were on the flat plane, like we're both like this. So. Oh yeah, no. And they can uh, look. They can kind of see in, um, even though it's it's really dark. And I need to know what are you guys using as a light source besides you know Mia has dark vision, but. I didn't realize it was that dark. We had torches before. Okay, yeah. so you okay? So you have your torch, and you can kind of vaguely see. Um, there's some kind of uh, wooden furniture that's been pushed up against the the opening there. Like to me, they tried to barricade the door. Only whoever did it did a really bad job and didn't realize that the door opened out instead of in. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Sounds like no. Uh, sounds like goblins at work. Yeah. Mia. And it's Zamia. absolutely silent. Zamia, mm. what do you suggest? You're a wise one. Mm, uh, do I see anything in there? From, from um, my point? So you're there? looking in, make me a perception check, Mia. Okay. A chair? Uh, 20, not natural though. That's fine, um, that's good. So from where you're looking, you have dark vision, so you can see much further than they can. And from where you're looking, you can see that there's a, a wooden bed post right there, and somebody's like shoved an entire bed up against the thing, into the up to like to block blockade the, the door in a very ineffectual manner, um, and uh, you can vaguely make out the shadow. It's just beyond where you can see, and it's not to do with like the distance you can see with dark vision so much as it has to do with the angle you have on this right now. Um, that there is something underneath the bed. Mm. Oh, no. Okay. Um, he thinks there's someone uh, barricade from the inside, but seemed to be something under the bed. bang a -rang. Yes, ma'am. Go find out. Send the little one. Yeah, yeah. send the, the little one. Yes, yes, ma'am. <laughs> I'll, I'll follow him across the ceiling um, and flank the open door Okay. I guess. Hey, and... When I hear, yeah. <laughs> yeah. When I hear you come around, I will, I will, uh, kind of like pad up over it and look down at you to see what's in there, and then kind of peer underneath, uh, like look at you, see you approaching, and then like kind of peer down. So as uh, you move up the here. door, I need you to make me an acrobatics check <sighs> because I'm the door starts to climb, swing man. a little bit as you're like climbing <laughs> up this thing, and I mean. 18 on the die. Okay, so you you have no problem. You you manage to, even as the door is kind of swinging in a closed-ish position, without actually closing all the way, um, you climb up to the top of it, and you can kind of perch on top of the, the door is. I would love to, if he's if he's kind of on top and I'm over on the side, yeah. I would love to just peek my head in a little bit and get a layout of the whole room. Like, is it just a room, or are there any other passages leading off. It's hard to tell because uh, with your light, you have, uh, who's holding the torch for starters? Let me ask that. Not, not Dot and Khan. So are you holding I guess the, I am. So you're holding I the torch. Just, yeah. uh, so you've got the torch. So yeah, you can see 20 feet into the room. Uh, there is uh, a bed. Um, it's mostly rotten uh, or wood, all kind of lashed together to form some kind of a, a sleeping receptacle. It's all you could think of. That's what you would use it for oh, if you were up in a tree. Wrong. And um, oh. there is, uh, uh, on the other side of the room, there is a flat surface also made of this wood. And, uh, and, and it's got four legs that come down. Um, and it's covered in a layer of dust. Uh, but oh. the far part of the room, though, you can't see all the way because... Uh, your light only goes in about 20 feet, and then it gets dark from there. Or okay. shadowy. Oh, banger. No, bang. Yeah. Bang. Yeah. Or, uh, yeah. Uh, maybe um, stronghold, a uh, throne here for for uh, Doc. Doc and Kong. But we need to clear it first. The, you know, under the bed. Uh, I'll, I'll climb okay. down onto the... Yeah, we'll both kind of... <laughs> and get to the floor and because we've been told there's something under the bed yeah there is something under the bed so you guys climb down to where you are and you guys both kind of like duck down and look under the bed and what you see is um, a giant turtle shell just a shell it's hard to tell 
Okay. How far away is it from me? Uh, a couple of feet. Okay. I'd like to, uh, with my bow, kind of reach out and poke it. Okay. Um, so you poke the shell, uh, and it, um, it moves in the direction that you poke it, uh, and then it moves in the opposite axis. The opposite <laughs> axis? Axis, oh, right? Smiling. So if you oh. poke it, it moves this way, and then it moves this way and shudders a little it. bit. <clears throat> um, does it have any holes? <laughs> yes. Does it, are the holes, can you see into the holes with the light that we have? Or is it, does it look like maybe there's some other type of fleshy material to So that? you shine a light down so you can get a better look. Um, and you see a pair of eyes gazing out at you from one of the holes. Do, Do I know what this is? Um, <laughs> make, a, uh, make a history check. Both, both of us or just him? Just him. Okay. Um, I have a seven total on history. Nature would be a 13 if that might be applicable. Well, it looks like a turtle. I mean, ah, you've seen turtles before. But a big turtle. But a really big turtle. Oh, giant. Giant. Giants. Giants! Oh. As soon as you make that sound, uh, the, the, the creature, like... Whatever it is, it panics, and um, the whole bed like lifts up as the creature's arms and and head come popping out from the thing, and it stands <laughs> up. Uh, is anybody on, is anybody on top of the bed? No. No. Okay. And the bed kind of like crashes to the ground as the creature backs away into the shadows really quickly. I like how this is the only turtle that comes out of its shell when it panics. <laughs> And then when it gets back into the shadow, it collapses again onto the ground and pulls its arms and legs in. Okay. Is that is that is that how they surrender? I told it to surrender and it did is that are you surrendering? Is that how you surrender? Surrender or die. I'll I'll say it in the various languages I know. What do you what do you speak again? Remind me. I speak uh, Chilton, Dwarvish, Goblin, and Grung and Whistlestick. <laughs> Um, so See if I get any reaction. Yeah. Um, uh, so you 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 speak those that thing like several times in different languages to this this creature who is on the other side of the room, and uh, coming back to you in Goblin, it says. Are you going to hurt me too? Not if you surrender in Goblin. Since this is the weirdest Goblin. This, this is a really weird Goblin. Did you, what, what language did you say that in? Oh, well, I would have... I probably would have just kept saying it in Goblin. I probably yeah. would have... I'm like, not a Goblin. no idea. Okay, so... Uh, so I'll, I'm going to slide my... I'm going to put away my scimitar, and I'm going to raise my hands like I'm just like... like little pads up in the air and I'm going to slowly step forward towards it. I'm just going to go hi in Goblin. And I'll, I'll follow him but I'll move into the room a little bit more. I still have my bow and arrow at the ready and hi. So you guys have the torch and you're like you have your hands up and uh, you can see, and you see these eyes like peering out from underneath the shell towards you. Um, and they're big, wide, concerned eyes. I'm gonna set the torch down as if it were like, as if it were like a gun or something. I'm gonna just set it down like it's a, a thing. And I'm gonna step back. I'm gonna be like, wrong? Hello? Oh, say hi. Beep. Woof. Meow. <laughs> is it is it still withdrawn into its shell or is yeah. it, has it okay? Yeah, All it's right. totally in its shell, and it doesn't seem to be responding to you. Uh, make an insight check if you'd like. Okay. Uh, I rolled a natural one, and uh, 
I only have a plus two. So yeah, you have no idea what this thing is doing. So then I'm gonna squat down. You know how like frogs like get into that little like huddled position. I'm yeah. gonna try and mimic the way that it looks completely, and then like put my little flipper, like the little pads up over my eyes, and kind of create like a little shell and just blink back at him. Bye. You do anything? All right. I... Are are the are the dinosaurs gone? Oh yeah, mate. All how all 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 like in all of Cholt? No. Hmm. You mean but the big one? In cave? Hmm. Sure. Cave? Yes. Hmm. I don't like the dinosaurs here. They oh. smell bad. Oh. All the ones here are dead. It is only us. And yes, again. they you. were dead when I saw them too, but they moved. No, no move, no move. They're dead dead. They're extra dead. They're super dead. Like, just his head pops out and he kind of looks at you guys. And he's like, what are you doing here? Oh, um, safe, uh, cave, safe, sleep, rest. Maybe. De definitely, definitely, definitely. De definitely, def definitely, definitely rest, rest, definitely rest. Mm -hmm. Walker. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and his head kind of retreats back into its shell. Are you, what, what, what are you uh, doing here? Resting. Traps. Um, traps? Dinosaurs. The dinosaurs trapped me. Oh, you can we can take? We can let you go. Maybe. And I turn around and I look at Bangerang and I go, um, Daka Khan hasn't seen yet, huh? We could let we could let him go if there's a way out besides that way. Yeah, it all all she wants is a, a place. I don't think she wants this goblin. No, let, let's right. get him out of here, and then we're all happy. Get. Does the room have any other exits besides this? Uh, besides the door we came in. So yeah, there's a, a, a hallway that leads out of this room, a passageway that you suspect goes back to where the two passageways forked when you first came into the cave. Oh, leads oh. around to the out. Yeah. There was the big water and the small water. Right, and on this side there is a, a narrow kind of a creek that leads off to a crack in the wall and kind, of, and kind of flows out of the cave from here. Um, uh, not big enough even for a grung to pass through. Okay, so uh, what, whatever, I'm just like down here like this with, with the things all over my head and I'm like, and I look over at you. Um, we, we could go, I could try and escort him out the other way. Seems like nice goblin if goblin. Don't want to go. You want to stay? It's what color is this one? In the jungle, he's green-ish. Oh, it, it, um, it's not gonna be good. Uh, our um, our green green is not a um a good no. um. No, wait, wait. I I have an idea. Do you surrender? Oh. And Bangarang will just like enthusiastically, <laughs> <laughs> just like, uh huh, Are uh huh. And I will, I will kind of like slowly, very like trying not to let Bangarang see me do it, like kind of like look. If I say yes, are you going to hurt me? No, we don't have to if you have surrendered. He kind of thinks about that for a little bit because he's not sure about the, the phraseology that you just used. <laughs> but then he decides that it's good enough. And he's, uh, he's like, okay. Excellent. Uh, stay here for a moment and I'll hop back out and yeah. I will uh, get back on the ceiling and all the way across and I'll go up to um, Dot and Con and I'll say, Ma'am, we have secured the room. There is one uh, goblin in there. 
He is not a problem. He has surrendered. He is going to leave as soon as he can. You can come on in. Everything will be okay. Does he submit? He submit? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Make him fine. praise Doc and Khan. Tell him, tell him about the amazingness, the soon to be goldness of Doc and Khan. Go. A- absolutely. And- but we should all go so we could rest. Yeah. Awesome. So I'll so. bring them back in and I'll make some show as she comes in and say, uh, my lady, the grand Dotten Khan, soon to be gold grung of the, the grung. And uh, what was your name again? Oh, uh, look at the turtle like, see, this is normal. See, we're all okay. <laughs> I am called Amble. Oh, Campbell? Amble. Amble? Amble. Ma'am, this is Amble. I thought you said this was a guabi. Um, Za, what is it? Uh, if you guys would like to make a history check, you're welcome to. <clears throat> it's yeah. a goblin, of course. We spoke in goblin. Six. I have a ten. Ten is good enough. Uh, so, <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> you uh, have heard of these, and you may have even met one at one point, Mia. This is what we call a tortle. 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 Yes, they are a peaceful uh, people that uh, that essentially look like large anthropomorphic turtles, um, in a very similar way to which grung look like small anthropomorphic frogs. <laughs> is it, is it? That not be a guabi, that's a tawdy. Oh, it's oh. big. Can it fight? Will it fight for us? We'll join my army. Uh, oh. uh, what language are you speaking in? grung to bangerang. Okay. Yeah, he's understanding. <laughs> and it, the, <laughs> the total... Amble can just kind of like, if he's reading expressions, like if he's like trying to like look back and forth, I'm just like. <laughs> he's looking at you guys like you're the weirdest thing he's ever seen. Um, Tell him serve or die. <laughs> uh, he already said he, he would, ma'am. It's, it's going to be okay. Uh, did you want to stay here and to help defend us as we sleep, Amble? I'll say in goblin to Amble. Amble doesn't like to fight. Well, we don't want to fight you, but if we all stay here, will you help fight in case something else comes? Amble doesn't like to fight. And you can see that his shell, uh, now that you're kind of looking more closely at him, is banged up and dinged, and there's scratches where maybe he'd been attacked. Um, And... uh, uh, he gets the impression that you're not going to harm him immediately, so he kind of like, like slowly emerges from his shell and stands up, and he's much Aww. bigger than you guys are. He, uh, uh, Amble is about six feet tall. Ooh. Uh, and I'll turn, I'll look back at Banger, I'll look back at um, Don Khan, <laughs> and in as placating of a grung... Uh, voices I can I will say he does not want to fight us and everything will be okay we should let him just stay here is he useful um, does he have information uh, he, he about- knew about the, the dead dead zombies get information from him uh, he must be useful um, or we eat him I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pad up to uh, Bangarang, and I'm going to just whisper into Bangarang's ear and be like, I, I could take him out into the hallway and pretend like, I mean, we could talk, but that way it doesn't have to be so aggressive. Uh, I don't know if we can get him to leave, but if we can, if we can that, that's fine. And I'll, at Amble, I'll say, would you go with Bleep and show him the other passages to make sure that everything is safe. There are, I'm going to look at Amble and be like, there are dinosaurs in the other passageways. Which other passageways? 
the passageways you came from. There's only one passageway. It's like a large circle. Ah, we have, but those are dead, dead. We killed those. We killed those dead, dead, dead. You They're very killed dead. them. Yes. I can leave. Arr, you yes. could. I need um. to sleep. We uh. do too. Are you going to leave or sleep? I'm going to sleep. You asked me to submit, and I have. Yes. Are you? Do you know the area? Can you talk to us about it? The area? We are in the jungle. Oh, yes. It's a big jungle. Oh, I do know oh. a lot of the areas in the jungle. I have walked all over them. Oh, free. Well, okay. Or we're trying to find our way back to a specific place where we think our our tribe has been taken, right? Hmm. Is that what we're looking for? And you plan to fight? Or do you, um, have you seen any other drunk? No. You were the but first. But you know us. I don't know you personally. No, us. Our, our, I hold up my flipper and I'm like, oh, you, you know, bro? You look like a really big talking frog to me. This one Ooh. is Bleep. I am Bangarang. That is Dot and Con. That is. Mi I Miyagi. I did get me. Okay. That is Miyagi. He is not. Me. He is not a grung. No. <laughs> Did you see He any... is an albino dwarf. I have seen many albino dwarves. Around mm. here? No. Okay. Have I you have seen any... been all around the jungle. <laughs> have and you there seen any I see all, all the things. But I jungle. don't go into the swamp. Do you live in the swamp? Do we? Yes. Yeah. Yes, we do. <laughs> yes. Okay. Have you seen any of the Batiri all around the jungle? Everywhere. Oh. I can't trip without falling on a goblin. Hmm. When's the last time you've seen goblins? I don't remember. I've been in here for some time hiding from the dinosaurs. I'm hungry. What you be eating in here? Um, uh, my food. Look around. Do I see any he <laughs> possibly could have been eaten? No, uh, you don't see anything that, like, leavings or anything. Or uh, He has a little pouch on one side uh, and a little belt that kind of goes around, and he kind of <laughs> digs into the pouch, and then he reaches his arm, and the pouch is maybe about, I don't know, that big. And his arm is pretty sizable, and he, his arm goes all the way in like this, and he reaches around, and then he goes, and he holds up the thing. It looks like a little, like, disc, and it's got all kinds of little, like, uh, algae and, and, and stuff on it. It's probably, it looks like it's made out of plant matter of some sort, right? He goes, Are they kale chips? I eat, I eat these. And then he puts mm. one in his mouth, and he's like... <laughs> okay. I'm standing, falling asleep. His, his voice is making me sleep. Yeah. <laughs> we, we, we should rest. We should take, take this moment. We are safe. We should all rest. And then he picks up a, a large piece of wood that you didn't see before, and you notice that he has, actually, he has a shield. Right? And he holds it up, and he's like, this is my ruler... This is oh. who I report to. A shield? Is there a symbol no, and on there's it? A, there's a, and there's, a, there's something painted on the shield. And it looks like a, a waterfall falling down into a serene pond. Do I recognize this symbol at all? Make a religion check. Yeah. Can I do the same? Absolutely. Ah, that's an eight. You're not sure. Hmm. I have a five, so I'm definitely yeah. not sure. You, you're certain that it is a that the symbol is religious in nature, but you don't know who the the deity is 
asking questions. Uh, who? You are report to a shield? Water. Fall. Eldath. Uh, I look over at Doc and Khan to see if, uh, it, with like this look, like, do you know who that is? Like, do you, is, is that somebody you go to like uh, brunch <laughs> with or something? Doug Khan is nodding off at this point. She hasn't got an idea. Yeah, no idea. She has no idea who this is. So he goes, Thank you for destroying the dinosaurs. Thank you for the information. And then he goes, I, I, I will give you a gift. And he reaches into his pouch that he has and his arm goes way deep in and he digs around and he comes back out with a bottle and the bottle has that same symbol on it of the little waterfall with a little going to a little pond and he like reaches out and tries to hand you the bottle. I'll take it. He goes, I... you should drink that. What is it? You're hurt. I am fine. And she'll try to stand up and look super like. He looks okay at you really closely, like not in a threatening manner, like he's examining you. And he's like, and she's, and she's that like, looks like a wound. And I'll go, um, or you want me to, to test it? I'll uncork it and give it a, a sniff. It smells uh, quite nice, actually. It smells like uh, clean water and fresh berries. Hmm. Yeah, bottoms up. I'll go ahead and drink it. Okay. Drink some of it. it. Like, is it a full bottle? Is it something like it's a one dose kind of thing? No, it's a you no. Know, it's like a. It's like it's like a. It's like a not much bigger than a shot. Oh, okay. All right. So down, down it goes. That was very nice. Thank you. You regain eighteen hit points as your wounds start to close. Hey. Wow. I will hand back the grung salve that Bleep gave to me and end it in a day. <laughs> Later. And I'll, I'll it tuck on. it. I'll tuck it and I'll be like, all right, fine. Should I go set up a throne? Yes. We should we should all rest. My lady needs well, she's already sleeping. We should all rest. We so I'll try my best to maneuver around Doc and Khan, who's like sleeping on her feet. And go about taking the bed, whatever it was, and like mm -hmm. kind of, kind of motioning it as quietly as possible uh, with whatever. I don't know how big it is, but I'm assuming it's bigger than me. Mm -hmm. and I'm just gonna like try and move it down softly to where and like position it into not quite the center of the room, but like kind of back a little bit. So if this would be like a new throne room kind of thing. The bed would be the throne, and I'm gonna like kind of push it back into that so I can, uh, and then I'm gonna just. Plop down next to Bangarang and say, ready. Mm. And I'll walk up to uh I'll walk up to Dot and Con and I'll I'll go to like Shaker Awake and I'll think better of it. And I'll just say <laughs> My lady? Ma'am. Ma'am. Mm. Bed. Mm. Bed. Wrong. Bed. So wrong. He's first. Amble walks from person to person looking at you all very closely and he doesn't seem to have a hugely great concept of personal space as he like <laughs> will come right up and look at like parts of your body that appear wounded and stuff. Um, and he's trying to, as he looks like he's trying to ascertain something as he moves from person to person in the group. Does he try to do that to Dot and Con when she's asleep on the bed? Yeah, well, yeah, he walks right up to her uh, as she is standing there and her eyes flutter open. He's standing no. there and he's looking at her. So, no, so I, as soon as, uh, I don't mind him looking in my personal space because I'm used to not having personal anything. But as soon as he starts to move like close to the bed where she is, I'm going to hop <laughs> in front of him and just do like this. Uh, and hopefully, I'm sure he's, he can walk right over me if he wanted to, and I'm just going to be like, yeah, and, he, hop, and he does. He, he, and he like, steps over you. Then I hop on that leg, and I hug it. And, um, <laughs> and, he, and he reaches down, and he puts a hand out like this, and you watch as a wreath of 
what looks like ethereal leaves kind of forms around his head, and a light <laughs> descends from the top of the cavern and strikes the sleeping form of Dot and Khan. And she and gets, I pull out my weapons. Um, And she regains 16 hit points. And suddenly she seems like she's sleeping much easier than she was before. And then he kind of like turns around and he steps back over you. Or he like kind of drags you with him <laughs> as he like starts moving from person to person, healing you each. Is, it, is he on me? Yeah, he eventually comes up to you. What other things you got to drink in that bag, hmm? He comes up to you and he like goes... And he takes one large hand and he puts it on your forehead. Um, and you can see uh, that he actually has what look like razor sharp claws on the tips of his fingers. As he puts his hand over your head and he kind of quietly chants something to himself for a moment. And for, for a minute, like right now, all of a sudden, you feel more awake than you have in the last 30 years <laughs> as he casts Lesser Restoration on your head. <laughs> and you cease to be intoxicated. At this point, this is a completely foreign feeling <laughs> from you. And uh, you can decide how you want to react to that. <laughs> <laughs> I just back away. Oh, ah. Whoa. Oh, ah. Ah. <laughs> what you do to me? I remove the smell. <laughs> you smell That's bad. My smell. Who are you to take my smell? <laughs> did you? Did I'm you want, Amble. Did you want that smell? No, <laughs> I didn't want him to have it either. <laughs> just reach down and I grab a big flask and just start chugging. <laughs> He kind of like, shrugs his shoulders and keeps on like moving around the group. And then eventually he settles into the one corner of the room, withdraws all of his limbs into the shell, and goes to sleep. And you can hear uh, him in the corner of the room. This one is weird. This one was not here the last time I was here. We should set up watches and sleep? Mm, I'll watch you sleep. Me, I need one of me me naps. You know what? And I just like slump up in a corner and I'm out. Yeah, you just like you start just, tossing them down, and your body yeah. like reacts because he casts the spell on you, and you, your body reacts in a way. It's like as soon as you introduce more into it, um, it's like for the first time, like drunk, <laughs> drunk for the first time, and it's like the most awesome sensation for a drunken master. Oh, maybe, actually, uh, maybe. And kind of collapse because yeah you go through those initial stages that you haven't been through of getting going from completely sober to drunk and you haven't felt any of that for like the last 30 years so <laughs> that was kind of cool wow <laughs> all right i would like to i'd like to help bleep like close the door and set up the barricade as best as possible and um curl up somewhere and say, you know, wake me, and I will watch next. So yeah, you can figure out a very easy way how to make the door actually work as a barricade where you, you part, take off part of the thing and you bar it shut and keep it, you know, keep it closed. Actually be effective as a That would actually work, yes. Okay. It was All clear right. that whoever did this before didn't know what they were doing. They hadn't um, seen Les Miserables and they didn't know what they were doing. No. So yeah, I'll, I'll, help them, I'll, I'll help him get that all set up and then say, you watch first. Okay. But this, uh, I just want to double check though that this thing has a, uh, this room does have another exit to it, yeah? Yeah, that's. It does, that's, yeah. I think so that's I would like to, um, or, or, mm, can I uh, scout the uh, tunnel yeah. first? Yeah. So you go scout the tunnel and it leads all the way back to the first fork where you guys first came into this place. Um, and you determine that with this door shut, um, that you only need to really watch the tunnel and then listen to the door. Okay, uh, so um, <laughs> I was asking for permission uh, before, and so I'll, 
uh, I'll take that as this. She gave me the permission. I went and looked. Is there uh, an adequate place for which to set up a blind uh, for myself or whomever is uh, watching, taking the next watch? For those of us without military experience, what is a blind, Rudy? <laughs> uh, well, if you are not a hunter uh, or you are not a military person at all, you are looking for basically something that would act as uh, as its own camouflage. So in this situation, I would probably be looking for stalagmites that would be in a, in a formation or something that I could keep watch and keep hidden at the same time. You don't uh, with find... A good there aren't any stalagmites, but there are. There is places where the walls jag, where you could totally hide and hang out and 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 keep an eye on things where you would not be seen. Okay, um, and it leads back to the water, right? There's still like water between us and the mouth of the cave. Uh, yes. Well, no, 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 no. You mean the the, the original mouth of the cave, or or where you are here? Um, I thought I was like kind of envisioning that there was uh, almost like. A subterranean river going. It's a, it's more thing. of a stream. It's and it's and it's big yeah. enough that you could take like one step into the water and then one step out and you're not in it anymore. Oh, I was okay before. I thought it was like a pool because that's where the dinosaurs the, were. The pool was in the other room. Through the oh, door. but this isn't because I, no, I was it, like it I'm, narrows down as it comes through this area. Gotcha. Um, I'm I'm trying to draw a map of it too. So uh, okay, <laughs> the. Cool. So, yeah, I mean, so the uh, so it comes around to the side, and uh, I just wanted to see if I can get a good spot where I can actually watch the entrance of the cave from this uh, hallway. Yes. Okay. So then I will I will go check the thing. I'll come back and report. Oh, it's um, oh, empty. Uh, found good good spot. Good job. Oh, 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 I'll be in blank. Come and then I'll if you need me or when it's time for me to watch. Okay, and if there's uh if there's space on the ground, like it's if there's dirt, I'll kind of like draw out a map of like what it looks like. Mm -hmm. If there's not, I'll take a berry and I'll smash the berry and then just draw it with the berry along the ground. Okay. Uh, so that she can see, and then I'll put a little X where the blind is so okay. that she knows she'd be able to locate me. Got it. Yeah. And I will go watch. And I will oh. curl up right next to the entrance mm -hmm. so that I am I am the first thing that he'll come across if he needs help. Totally. Um, so you guys set up watches and you go through that. Um, the the long rest passes uneventfully. And Yay. you guys uh, wake eventually refreshed. <sighs> Did I get relieved in the middle of the night? Because I kind of assume that I just I won't. Yes. Okay. I think you did. Ask, yeah, that was no, ask, that was that ask, was the plan. You were supposed to come get me, and then I was gonna watch. And yeah, no. You I just, not. I just know my my role, and I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah, you spend your time in the darkness, uh, bleep, uh, and think about how you would have to do a whole lot less of this if your brothers were here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And then you're and when she can, oh, can 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 we have can can I have a moment when she comes to relieve me? Yeah, sure. I'll come okay. padding on over quietly, taking a look and see you. And I'm not expecting any conversation, so I'll just see you and then give you a kind of a curt nod. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. Do you think we'll find uh, rip back blue? I I hope so. Uh, I'm worried for them. You. Think they would nag nag or chrome it? They are, they are very capable, and they are very strong, and they are very fierce. And um, but not very smart. They don't have to be smart. They just have to be strong and fierce, and they are, and we will see them again. I, I, I wish I was as comforting as you mean it. Mm. When, when you have to answer to everybody, you get very good at learning what they want to hear. Go sleep. Mm. You'll feel better in the morning. Okay. I'll give him a little, like, half like comforting <laughs> pat on the shoulder, like not sure <laughs> should, like. 
like hesitate. <laughs> <laughs> It's like the equivalent to a, a military hat. Like it's the the military equivalent to an ass out hug. Yeah. <laughs> it, yeah. It's like I don't know if I don't know what you really need, but I'm trying to be good. So pat, pat, pat. Good All job. Right. I'm gonna uh, and then I'll I, on my way as I'm walking away. I'll I'll go. Um, I know that was weird. Um, thank you. Mm. <laughs> Thank you for not uh, pointing it out until you were leaving. Uh -huh. And then I'll just duck into the blind and take <laughs> myself a position to watch. <laughs> and I'll slowly pad back to the room, take a, a glance at our two sleeping allies and the uh, the Amble. What is Amble? Is he like in the shell sleeping yeah. or? Yeah, he's in the okay. shell. Um, all right, so then I'll just kind of look around the room and uh, I will eventually go to sleep, but for a while, I'll probably just sit up and, and think about where they might be and who hope, hope that they're okay. Okay. And that maybe the French one did a good job of keeping the earth alive. So you guys get through your evening's rest and go ahead and uh, recuperate and all that good stuff. You Yay. get your, your key points back and all that fun stuff. Um, uh, as people are waking up and moving uh, Amble, like, his arms kind of pop out of this thing, and he, like, opens his eyes, and he looks around and looks at you guys, and he's like, I... What are you doing here? We are searching for the rest of our tribe. What are you doing here? Army. Hiding... I told you that. Well, we told you that too. Is where, there anything else we need to tell you? Where is your tribe? They were taken by mm, something in my notes. <laughs> they were taken by the Bateri that work with the Golden Croak. Ooh. Ooh? Ooh. He said, ooh. Ooh? Where? Why, ooh. Where are they? We don't. That's what we're looking for. Do you know? Maybe. And he uh, reaches down into his, his pouch and he rustles around and he pulls out a little bowl. And he takes the bowl and he kind of ambles over to the water and he dips it in the water. And then he sets the bowl down and it balances on the ground, and he's like, we will see. And he takes his face and he sticks it right up to the water. <laughs> <laughs> and you can hear him murmuring something down there, and he does it for quite some time. He murmurs and murmurs and murmurs, um, probably 10, 20 minutes pass, and then he comes back up. And when he comes back up, um, his eyes are like milky white, and he he speaks in a, a strange tone. Um, and uh, he says, mm. To reach your goal, you must have four things. Ash from a dead dwarf's tomb. Feather of a prince from Kir Visage of the Goblin Queen. Flame from the tongue of the last son of Mesro. At that point, his eyes clear up, and he looks very seriously, and then he goes, y'all. I'll look over at Dot and Tan and say, does, does that sound like the four things you needed? I hate, I hate when a prophecy doesn't rhyme. <laughs> <laughs> 
Is it the four, one of the, yeah. Are those the four things that I was looking for in the first place? You, you didn't look? know what the other things were. You knew that you needed the ash from the dwarf's tomb, and that was it. Yes. Oh. <laughs> then I'll pop up from sleep and be like, oh, what me miss? Hmm? Uh, what, what, what else did you see while you were blowing bubbles? Did you, did you see where the rest of our tribe went? Did you see where the rest of our, our family went? Not exactly. I only see what I need to see. Why do you need to see what she needs? Because I'm coming with you. Ah, useful, yes, yes. I do not fight. I will take my cue. <laughs> Bangrang has no idea how to respond to that, and then she'll see Dot and Khan get all happy, and then she'll smile and be like, Okay, no, that's good. Bang, bang a ring. Yeah. Ask it if, I'm saying this in Grung. Uh, ask it if it knows where to get these things. Uh, I'll, I'll ask, I'll also ask, do you speak anything other than goblin? I can speak common. Can, oh. sp can you speak in common? Is that? Chultan? What's that? No. No. Oh. No. Can you speak the language of water? I can speak water. They call it Aquan. Mm -hmm. Hmm. I don't suppose that any of you are a druid. Oh. Then goblin it is. Oh. Okay. <laughs> and there's a moment in where Bangarang was so hoping there'd be somebody who could talk to everybody. <laughs> and she kind of very quietly sighs and says, We would be happy to have you along. My mistress would like to know if you know where any of those things are. So um, I want you guys, uh, uh, and I'm going to assume for a moment that you took some notes, uh, to make me a... Uh, uh, you can make me three history checks, but we're going to do them in order. So for the, you know about the, the ash from the dead dwarf's tomb. For the, for the next thing on the, on the list, go ahead and make me a history check. Am I doing this too? Absolutely. Seven. The feather from Kirsabal? Yes. A history? If we have the ash, don't we? You we do have the ash. Yeah. Yes. Uh, as a scout... Was I ever, I was just like basically just the point man for uh, the army stuff, or did I ever actually go out and do any scouting around the area? Uh, for this, but the, uh, that's a good point, uh, Rudy. Uh, for this purpose, uh, Baloop, I'm sorry, Baleep would have um, advantage on these checks. Okay. And you can make them as though you were uh, proficient as well. Uh, okay, at that's... Least, at least this one. Okay. I only got an 11. Okay. And a five. <laughs> you have no idea. Uh, so the first one was an 18. <laughs> the names of places, Mia, are, are irrelevant. Oh, I don't remember much. As long as, as, long as they have something to drink. Uh, I got an 18 uh, for the first one. So Here's you know that Kirsabal is a place where the Aracocra live. Okay. Do I know? But and I know where it is too. Um, you know vaguely how to get there. Um, yeah. Would I know like that it's basically a giant spire and that like you can see it from different places? Yes. Okay. Yeah. You know that you're you're fairly confident that given enough time you could find it. Okay. So, uh, the ne the next you clue you guys got was visage of the goblin queen. You know about there is a goblin queen. Uh, make me uh, who uh, another history check. This one, this one, Rudy uh, is not location based, so um, it's just a straight history check for you. Okay, I guess, fifteen. I guess I'll ask then, since I speak goblin, do I know anything more about goblin history that I might be able to get some help with this? Uh, sure. You can take advantage. W would you get uh, sixteen? Seventeen. 
17. Okay. I also speak goblin. Yeah. Oh. I had 10. So. And you know, you know who the goblin queen is. And you know that she lives in a place they call Yell Yark. And I only got a 14. Yeah. Yell Yark. You know there is a goblin queen. <laughs> And, and Satine's like, yeah, she's my friend. We hang out on the weekend. Oh, no, there's no friendships <laughs> with goblins. <laughs> Not even, like, little ones. <laughs> I hate that girl. Yeah. Wow, she's such a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> and um, Mesro, uh, you guys go ahead and make me a, uh, a history check. This one is location-based, Rudy, so you get Chris. an advantage. I'll need it. So, uh, so I got a natural twenty plus. Uh, if I get proficiency on these for that one, it'll be a twenty-three tops. So Mesro is a place you don't go. Okay. It's a ruin. It's but it's but people who go there, and by people I mean Grung, never come back ever. Okay. Ooh. It's a bad Good place. Very dangerous. Do I know that it is? Like, I wouldn't know about the things that happened to it prior, but I would basically just know that it's ruins. You do know yeah. it's a ruins. You, you've, you've, you've looked upon Mesro without actually entering. I've gotten as close as I dare to get. Yes. Got it. And then been, okay, I've seen the thing they want me to see, and I'm going back. Yeah. Uh, what was the thing we're supposed to find in Mesro? Flame, Flame from the tongue of the last sun. May I, uh, may I ask... Uh, for maybe something interesting here. Could I have also, could we have had maybe a fifth brother at a certain point who was kind of like Koval's uh, character that was like, ah, I'm going to go in and I've never seen him again. Yeah. Great. We're going to make up a name for him and that's going to be another reason why I'm afraid for my current brothers. <laughs> well, we had bleep, bloop, blop. Blarp. Um, blarp, blarp, blarp. Oh, I had a blarp? I thought it was uh, blop, blip. Uh, blop. No, blarp is the one you. Blip. Blarp is the one you lost to Mesro. There you go. Okay. Zamia. Why mm. is Zamia? Mm. Do you know of any of these items? Do you know anything nope. about all of this? Mm -mm. So. Nope. Not a thing. Amble um, will come over, and he seems to have a lot of like knowledge of the area around here, um, and so do you too, Bangarang and Baloop, and he will confab with you guys for a few moments. Um, and together, uh, you guys figure out that these three locations um, are roughly equidistant from where you are presently, but in three completely different directions. Of course, of course. <laughs> <laughs> So the, the feather from Kirisabal is just a, was it just a feather from? A feather Kirisabal? of a prince from Kirisabal. Of a prince. My lady, do you know of a, a bird prince? Do I? No, oddly, they don't have any princes that you're aware of. You know that the, the, the Aarakocra have an elder, but nothing about a prince. Only elder, no prince. Mm. But we can ask. They, I'm sure they've heard of me, and they would love to help us. <laughs> of course, everyone has heard of you, ma'am. Always. They would be, they would fall all over themselves to help you. And then she'll, she'll turn back around to Amble with wide eyes and be like, all right, bird people, uh, goblin queen, and place we don't want to go. Uh, he, he just basically turns and looks directly at Dot and Khan. Because um, he is now, based on the way this whole group dynamic is going, figured out who's in charge. Yes. And he's like, which one do you want to go to first? Ma'am, he is asking where we would like to go to first. I understand him. Tell him... Mesro. Oh, no. <laughs> if you can't get that, no. then, or can't get any of them, and we are refreshed now. Ah, Unless Mesro. there is an order. Ask him if there is an order. Is there an order? 
I forget who knows who's speaking where and who's just ignoring who. <laughs> I need like one of those string charts back here to be like this person, <laughs> but won't respond to this person. Bangering <laughs> asking. Not that I'm aware of. Mesro. We are going to Mesro. Oh, oh. This guy is Mesro. I have the drinks. <laughs> what? Don't, no, Mesro has no drink that you're aware of. There's zero, mm. zero drink in Mesro. Mm. Can I can I grab a, a bangerang real fast and like pull her over to a corner? And, sure. Uh, okay. Um, scout. Uh, when scouting, we last be our. Mm, I remember. No, in Mesro. Mm. Not going. No. Worse. No. And how how carry flame? How take? This is this is a challenge for Dottencon. If she can do this, then she proves that she's she's gold. Not our job. Our job get her there. Her job carry flame. <laughs> I I I hear you. I I just her jobs of carrying anything are typically mine. <laughs> well, if it's safe enough for her to carry, then it's safe enough for you to carry, right? Hey, I don't think that's how that works. Okay. I don't think so either, but that's okay in this case. We don't have to think about this. We just have to be strong. Okay. I know, I'm worried too. And she'll turn around and she'll look at everybody and say, we are confident everything's going to be okay. And I will force the biggest smile I can. And it's kind of, it's like creepy. <laughs> <laughs> Good. We keep everything here. We keep this place secret. This is our, this is our safe place. Okay. Safe place. <clears throat> Rami, should I, should I set up safety measures? Tell him yes. Yes. Good idea. Let us let us secure this location for future usage. I'm gonna uh, actually take notice, like really be like, wait, she just you didn't have to relay that. She actually just straight up she jumped part of that chain of back and forth. She did. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, I didn't also, notice. <laughs> So you still told me what she said before. Yep. Okay. I totally miss. I just, I'm just so used to relaying everything. <laughs> okay. So um, I'm also going to be like, uh, should we uh, recruit more for the army from our army or uh, just us? Well, we do not know where our army is unless, uh, uh, and I'll look over at Amble. Amble, did you see where our army is when you were seeing all the fun stuff while making bubbles? No. Mm. I did not see them anywhere. <laughs> okay. Oh, that's right. Well, we will have to keep an eye out for them everywhere. Okay. I'm going to go set up trash. <laughs> and Amble mm. slowly starts making his way out towards the entrance of the cave while you're setting up your traps. Okay. Um, it's probably a smart thing. <laughs> I will start rigging I will start rigging traps uh, and I will get you a list of what kind of traps and where I'm gonna put them. Sounds and great. You can tell me how well they do. Totally. <laughs> I wanna grab Z Mia. Za Mia. Mm. You are yeah. very wise. You are my wise, wise mentor. We have to protect them. They are my army. Mm. You have to make them strong. Maybe you teach them how to fight better, to protect me and make me Orin or Gold Grung. Take a big swig. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Good. <laughs> that took a lot of effort. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we prepare. Let's go. So you guys get the whole thing rigged up, and you get out there, and you see that uh, uh, Amble is like kind of looking around and stuff as you're um, getting ready to leave. And he's like, it looks safe. Which way are we going? That way. All right, uh, I'll set up a, as standard of a um, 
scout as I can with bleep, with him going on ahead and and me like trailing behind and trying to keep an eye on on everything as. Yeah, as you gonna follow the turtle, I guess. As, well, after he after he says that way and points that direction, um, he turns and starts walking that way. But if you set up like with like a scout with bleep in front, like you normally do, and other stuff, right? Catching up and passing Amble is not a terribly huge chore. Um, he's not slow, but he is very measured. Um, so all in all, he actually. Um, once he gets going, uh, he gets like some momentum behind him. Uh, he moves at about 30. All right. <laughs> that'll, that'll make it easy for us to range around and keep an eye out for all the dangers of the jungle. But he's very much a one direction walker, right? And then if he has to change directions, he has to stop, turn, and then head in that direction. And there's a whole slow down, speed up process that happens with that. And it happens several times over the course of the day so you, you get familiar with this speed up process and it's kind of, it's a little aggravating uh, at first and later on it's completely maddening. <laughs> so basically I'm taking, I'm like out ahead and I just have to keep looking back to see if he's changed directions and then basically hop in like an arc to get around in front of him again to be in scouting. Yes, and fortunately that's really easy to do. <laughs> I would imagine I'm I'm trying to stick in the trees as much as possible anyway. Sure, so. totally. Yeah. yeah. And you guys are walking along, um, and uh, uh, you get a long ways away from here. Uh, the first day of travel passes relatively uneventfully, uh, and you, you hunker down for the night, and you set up a watch, and that evening passes uneventfully as well. Um, the next day, you're, you're kind of walking along, and you made several course corrections over the course of the day, uh, ample course corrections. And um, why don't uh, you guys all make me some perception checks? I would love to. I wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> 14. Whoops. That's a dirty 20. I rolled a one. A dirty 20 uh, is better than no 20. I'm just Mine's saying. a 19. <laughs> 19, 20, what'd you get, Sig? 14. 14 is pretty good. Um, uh, so you guys are kind of cruising along, and uh, s at some point, um, Bloop and uh, Bleep and Bangarang, you both notice very slight odd movement in the trees above you. Um, just enough so that you're not surprised, but you don't have enough time to warn your friends as a series of things happen. So if I'm traveling in the trees, like up in the trees as my watch thing, mm -hmm. was I up there for this one or is this after like a rest? No, no you're, you're, you're in the trees. You're just, um, you're, you're a little ways off from where the disturbance happens. You're, okay. not, you're not in that tree. Got it. Yeah, but I mean, like, so it's, uh, I'm up on, like, close to the same level, but it's just further away and, like, through some of the uh, canopy. Absolutely. So I don't see yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, well, and I would be the same behind yeah. the group. So you guys, because you're up there, you see this, um, and then you, like, you're, you like, you, you get that moment for the, your eyes get wide, and you turn, and you get ready to say something, and I want you all to roll me some initiative. Oh. oh. Don't like this die. That was an eight. <laughs> I got a 16. I also have a 16. I got a 10. Uh, you can uh, go first um, since you're the mastermind. I'll let you direct yeah. me. And help, 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 help. Mostly that. I was just trying not to meta it. No, nope. I don't have to meta it. That's my job. My job is the direction and helping, so why not? Yep. And I figured it was best for me to wait it out for you to tell me where to help. <laughs> Oofta. We're being attacked by Ooftas. What are we being attacked by? Oh, I'm going to get there in just a sec here. All right. I'm, I'm, I'm mathing right now. Uh-oh. Math is hard. Mm. Hate it when you math. <laughs> Meanwhile, hey... 
that that DMs Guild Grung thing that you can go and get. It's it's available, right? Hey. Yeah, and all the uh, and, and all the Guild Adept stuff that uh, Chris Lindsay has uh, put together for uh, all the people, and most of the adventure stuff there is actually AL legal, so you can take those and play them at the local game store. And stuff. Absolutely. Yeah. So Ooh. what you guys see, like basically hanging from branches and trees, at first you didn't notice them, and then all of a sudden they move, um, is what looks like a large man-sized monkey um, with naturally glowing green eyes and fangs and stuff and claws and things. And um, let me see here. <laughs> Numbers. Evil sloths. So, um, uh, you two, Bloop and Bangarang, are not surprised. Um, Dot and Khan and Mia uh, and Amble are uh, all surprised. Um, the creatures uh, notice you guys up on their level of the uh, uh, of the trees, um, and two of them. Um, basically stare the two of you directly in the eyes individually and you feel like a jolt of pain to your head like, but they didn't touch you at all and I need you both to make me a wisdom saving throw. 13. Seven. Okay. Um, so you managed to shake off the pain bangerang. Mm. Um, but uh, bleep, you feel the pain much more acutely. You are gonna take 17 points of psychic damage. Oof. Oh man. And you are and you are stunned. That's the worst migraine. Ooh. I need you to make me a dexterity saving throw. Okay. At disadvantage. Uh, that will be a uh, sixteen. Sixteen. Okay, so you're mm -hmm. you're you're managed to be clinging to one side of a tree branch on top of it, uh, so you don't fall directly out of the tree when you get stunned. Um, at the same time that that happens, a uh, third creature. <laughs> um, basically grabs nearby, grabs a basket that is, that's basically bound to the bottom of a tree branch, a massive tree branch. Um, and it's, when I say massive, I mean it's like, you know, this big around and there's all these vines and stuff going all over it. And it's, you know, very jungle book, right? Uh, and there's, you guys are in the jungle. So it's like all kinds of cover and darkness and stuff. And they, rips this thing away and jumps at the same time away from the branch. At that point, a bundle of vines drop down on top of Dot and Con, who Ooh. needs to do, hang on for a second while I make a roll. Yeah. Okay, so Dot and Con, I hit armor class 23 as these things drop down and they grab you. Um, they immediately begin to squeeze and you take 11 points of damage and you are grappled. Um, you can feel spines from these uh, vines digging into your skin uh, and you can look at them and you can see that there's kind of a venom on them and you're thinking, thanking the gods that you are a grung because yeah. that doesn't seem to be having any effect on you. <laughs> so... <laughs> But it hurts a lot, and it's got you. Um, so at this point, um, Bangarang, who is not surprised, can do something. Okay, so uh, these vines are like hanging from the the trees above, and they've wrapped around her. Yep, and they're kind of pulling her up, almost like a noose, up into the tree. 
Okay, I would like to draw my dagger and run forward and see if I can cut the vines up where I am to get her loose. Okay, so you go leaping through the trees to get to the vines, and I need you to make an attack roll. Sure. Be a 16. Excellent, 16 will totally hit these vines. Hey, so they're, they're grabbing my friend, so I'd get sneak attack, right? Um, no. <laughs> not not just now. All right. Uh, it's gonna be five. Okay, so you start hacking at the vines, and they're very, very woody. Um, as you start trying to cut them through, and you're having a hard time cutting them with your dagger. Um, okay. And I, um, how far away is she from me? Well, she's down on the ground, and you guys are about, I'm going to guess you're about 50 feet up in the, in the trees right now. Um, and so she's probably about, I don't know, she's been pulled five feet up off of the ground, so she's about 45 feet away. All right, then I'd like to, uh, with my bonus action, try to attack these vines again. Go for it. Try to get her down as quickly as possible. Bang a ring! What? That's a natural 20. Okay, you crit the vines. <laughs> Offhand attacks. So. Roll that beautiful bean footage. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be seven. Ooh, seven damage. Uh, uh, uh. As you Look start hacking that. away more of the vines, and you're like, ah, frantically trying to get out of this thing. I'm doing that uh, Drax thing from inside the worm. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, Bloop, you are also not surprised. What do you want to do? Um, I'm stunned, so the only thing I can do is make oh, my. Oh, that's right. I forgot about so that. So they were they beat us all in initiative, really. They they sure did, yeah. So you yeah. need to go ahead and make me another saving throw for wisdom. <laughs> Woo! That one will be a fifteen. Okay, so you shake off the effect by the end of this turn, and mm -hmm. uh, your head starts to clear, and you see these creatures. Um, uh, just make me a, a kind of a general knowledge roll. Uh, general as, knowledge? Yeah, like, as, as though you are uh, uh, proficient. Like uh, intelligence, proficient? Plus, intelligence plus proficiency bonus. Okay, uh, so like not nature or anything, just... Uh, no. Okay, uh, 14, well, but if I'm proficient. So 14, uh, no intelligence bonus, but proficiency is plus three, so 17. Okay, excellent. Um, you... Uh, have run into one of these creatures previously, and it tore apart an entire like squad of other grung. You watched, and it's called a Sioux monster. <laughs> and we have C three. And there are three of them. Okay, and I was the only survivor of this other thing. No, you weren't. You weren't. Uh, your squad wasn't in the fight. You guys saw what was going on, and you bailed. What? Okay. I should say you were ordered to bail. Okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Wiser minds prevailed, Bangarang. <laughs> um, and uh, was Bangarang the did Bang so Bangarang knows them too? Yeah, Bangarang would remember them as well. Okay. Oh. So you, okay. so Bangarang's been my squad leader yes. for and a these while. Okay. these vicious monkey-like creatures, large monkey-like creatures, and when I say large, I mean like the size of a man, like medium size, right? Right. Um, uh, they have some kind of weird like mojo power that they use on things and they just used it on you and it totally worked okay so then uh i know that i don't really get a turn here but what i will uh if you'll allow is i'll just uh i'll just yell out to bangarang like <laughs> okay um so um Mia and da adat and khan are relieved of their round one responsibilities because you are surprised as is Amble. Uh, so we will come back around to the monsters. Um, at this point, uh, the one that had grabbed the basket and jumped away um, leaps down to the ground uh, right behind where Mia is standing. Uh, and he uses that ability, his, his eyes glow unnaturally. And Mia, I need you to make me a wisdom saving throw. Uh, six. Six. Six is bad. Mm-hmm. 
So you feel a stabbing pain in your head worse than the worst like hangover you've ever had, um, <laughs> which is saying something. Uh, <laughs> as you take uh, 20 points of psychic oh. damage oh. and are stunned. Oh. I'm also stunned, you said? Yes. Oh, okay. The other two um, move to engage... Uh, Bangarang and Bleep in in hand to hand combat. So um, they move very quickly through the trees, just like you guys do, and they get to you. Um, and the first one on Bangarang will make uh, an attack with its claws and its bite. Um, its bite is only going to hit an armor class of thirteen. That misses. And its uh, claws, however, will hit armor class seventeen. Uncanny dodge. Okay. So, Uncanny Frogs, and you're going to take half damage from this attack. <laughs> uncanny um, Frog! <laughs> and uh, you, uh, let's see here. Um, so you're going to take half damage, will be six points of slashing damage. Okay. And then the other one comes running for Bleep. Bleep, I rolled a one on its bite attack. That's going to miss. On its claw attack, I hit armor class 18. Uncanny frog. So you uncanny frog, <laughs> and you also will take six points of, of uh, claw damage as it slashes into you. That's after the, uh, yeah, okay. The uh, uh, vines um, continue to squeeze... Uh, Oh wait! Uh, actually, I would like to uh, use my reaction to take a take a hop back. I can move fifteen, uh, ten ish, ten to fifteen feet back from my uh, for my skirmisher feature. Okay. Oh yeah. Yeah, you can totally do that. So instead of in canny frogging, I will completely avoid the damage by moving back. Okay. So you it comes rushing at you, and as it gets to you, you jump back and get out of its way. Um, the assassin vines continue to squeeze Dot and Con for another eleven points of damage ow, 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 ow. and Bangarang. draw you up tighter into their into their fold. Um, Bangarang, what do you want to do? Uh, I will, for my cunning action, disengage from this crazy beastie dude mm -hmm. and um, draw my bow. I'm going to try to shoot the vines. Okay. I just don't want to be next to this thing when I do it. So... <laughs> I mean, that's not funny at all. <laughs> that's an eight. Unfortunately, an eight does not get through the woody vines. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I kind of figured. Okay. You got anything uh, else you want to do? Oh, I've got tons of things I want to do. I don't think I can <laughs> do anything. Else. Okay. I will, I will um, move to be in flanking with the one that's on bleep. Okay, got it. So you can finish up your movement by moving over there. Um, yeah. And uh, bleep. I use my bonus action to disengage. To attack? Cool. Oh, disengage, that's right. Yeah, okay. that's why I moved into flanking with you, or next to the guy. So. I mean, Doc and Khan's next to the other one anyway because of the, uh, the assassin vine, so. Yeah. Uh, yeah. This is some insane jungle book action going on here. People are bouncing yeah. on the trees. 45 feet up. Yeah. Uh, so... So there's one of these two monsters next to uh, me, and then there's also one next to Doc and Khan, which is a little further away from me. Yeah, and no, it's not next the, to it's not next to Dot and Khan. It's 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 in the tree above her, and it's forty five feet above her. Yeah, that oh, was because, the one that I fled from. Yeah. yeah. Okay, and you were attacking the wall. You were attacking the vine to try and get it to drop her. Exactly. Got it. Okay, so I'm actually going to quickly kind of like, as you're hopping towards me, I'm going to like look at you to see which one do you want me to, which one do you want me to, to go after? And I'm indicating the one that's on you. I'm like, because I'm going to okay. come next to that thing and help you out. All right, so you move up, uh, you move up next to it. I will uh, launch myself forward, uh, pulling my scimitars and rubbing them against my skin as I do. Go for it. And come down with uh, with my attacks. Okay, so uh, some, some short grunting later and we're, we're, we're trying to kill a sioux monster. 
Yeah, so oh that'll God. be a 12 <laughs> on the first hit. A 12 will hit. Cool. Uh, so that'll be my sneak damage, and I get some poison on that, too. Uh, so that'll be... Give me all the damage. Uh, that'll be roughly 20 damage. 20 damage. So you come through with your scimitar and you cut this massive gash into this into this Sioux monster and it kind of opens up this huge wound on it and it's like bleeding profusely and it's not dead, but it doesn't look like it's going to, to last much longer if you do this cool. again. Oh, uh, did you, sorry, uh, do you want to make a constitution saving throw for the poison? It'd be a DC 12. And if that's the, then we would lose four damage out of that. It wouldn't, it does not make it saving throw. Okay, so then I'll use my bonus action for the next attack. Uh, and that one will be a 15 to hit. Yeah, that totally hits. And a total of uh, seven uh, damage. Okay, so you bring the other one, uh, Scimitar, across, and you finish off the Sioux monster. Its head goes. And you will remember, now that you're thinking about it, you were very young when you saw the other Sioux monster before, like last year. I'm still a little too cautious to really want to go through all of this. So um, cool. I'm going to look over, after I finish that, I'm going to look over and be like, come on, vine or Sue? So I'll do the vine. Oh. Yeah, there's okay. no, no red vines, no black vines, just green vines. Uh, and so how much further away is the other vine from me? Or sorry, is the other Sioux monster The other from Sioux me? monster is about uh, 30, 30 feet away from you at this point. Okay, so I've got about 15 feet left of movement. Um, I can get close to that one. or And there is one on, uh, on uh, Miyagi. Yeah, there's now. one on Mia, and it, it is... Uh, it is it has hit Mia, and Mia's like whole body has like stiffened up as he's like kind of staring at the creature. Okay, uh, so would I be able to make it to that one on this round, or at least close? No, not yet. How close? You can you could probably get uh, within ten feet of it. Okay, that's what I would like. I would like to jump towards that one. Okay, so you jump towards that one and you land ten feet away from it, uh, not yep. far away. Cool, Mia, you are stunned. Go ahead and make me a saving throw. Another wisdom saving throw. Uh, that would be twenty-two. Twenty-two. That's, that's plenty. Plenty enough. You shake off the effect of this thing as this creature like starts dangerously approaching towards you with its claws. Um, Dot and Con, you are up a tree without a paddle. What do you want to do? Want to start uh, back and forth in these vines? Yeah. And what I would like to do is. Uh, get a little bit of lift and then wiggle my way out to do a backflip. Fantastic. So you can make me a uh, acrobatics check to attempt to escape this grapple in that regard. A natural 20. Hey! Okay. So you, you, with all of your like skills, you manage to like unwind yourself essentially. It's like your body becomes water as you just kind of like go limp in some places and rigid in other places, and then you just flip out from one side to just stand before the the assassin vines before you. I taught her everything she knows. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, and there you have it. So you're standing next to the assassin vines, and um, you are no longer grappled. Um, that brings me to Amble. Amble! So actually, 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 mm -hmm. I would like to get far away from it by using my uh, key to, as I land, jump away from it. Okay. It's a dodge. It's a disengage. Disen oh, you're going to disengage yeah. and move. Excellent. So you can do that. You move, move, use a key point, and you basically get away from this thing altogether, and you, uh, how far away do you want to move? I want to get as close to uh, Miyagi as possible. Okay, you can get near where uh, uh, where uh, Bleep is standing. So you're about within 10 feet of him at this point. Um, 
uh, Amble, at this point, uh, he panics right where he's standing. He's like, ah! He looks around, and then his hand and his head go boop, and he goes, thunk, and hits the ground. <laughs> and he's sitting there on the ground, a shell. No head, no legs, no arms. They're all inside. That's his action. He's done. <laughs> um, at this point, uh, the Sioux monsters uh, continue their onslaught. Uh, the one that um, is down by Mia will attack him. Um, first with bite, then with claw. The bite attack will hit an armor class of 22. Mm -hmm. For a grand total of four points of chomping damage. And uh, fortunately, however, the, the claws only hit armor class 11, and you deftly parry them away. Ooh, is there another, there's no other creature around me, huh? No, well, not unless you count your, your allies, no. Okay. So at this point, the other Sioux monster, <clears throat> nope, um, will um, jump through the trees, landing near <clears throat> Bangarang. Uh, to try and prevent Bangarang from taking out the, the vines. Uh, it's going to hit armor class 17 and 18. Yes and yes, and I will uncanny frog the second one. Okay, okay. so you get bit for four points of damage, and okay. you get slashed for six points of damage. Um, oh, yay. And then, let's see here. <laughs> 20 feet, huh? All right. The assassin vines reach out, spiraling out towards where you guys are standing. Um, and they are going to attack. Uh, Dot and Con, armor class 16. Nope. Okay, so you managed to duck as these things come flying over your head to try and grab you again. Uh, and you see that this creature has like a 20 foot reach out from where it is. It's huge, it's freaking huge. Um, and uh, yeah, Bangarang, what do you want to do? Uh, I'm trying <laughs> to get away from these guys. I will. Uh, as a cunning action, disengage again okay. from this guy and jump away. Okay. Um, and I would love to jump up, like back up into the canopy. Sure. And then with my movement, get over the Sioux monster that um, Miyagi's around mm -hmm. and Bleep is heading towards. Yeah. And I would like to try to shoot that guy. Go ahead. Roll the hit. That's going to be a 21. Hit. And this one I get sneak attack. You sure do. He's right next to Mia. That's 15 Ouch. damage. And, uh, and then I moved. And I think that's all I can do. Okay. So Please. you put a... Yeah. Put an arrow uh, through the creature's shoulder, and it just he watches the shoulder kind of like goes limp, and, and blood explodes from its fur, and it howls in pain. Um, and I silently just grin to myself up top. And bleep. Uh, then I will uh, finish closing the distance to the one that is next to Miyagi. Mm -hmm. uh, and launch into my scimitar attacks. Go for it. Glory of scimitars. Uh, that'll be a uh, 21 to hit on the first one. That will totally hit. OK, that is going to be. Uh, do you want to give me the uh, con saving throw? What's, uh, no, 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 no well, bueno. Okay, uh, so that'll be... Wow. 
Uh, that's going to be 31 on the first attack. Okay, so Whoa. you behead him <laughs> on the first attack. Woo! And Whoa. there's another... As evidently Sue monster heads pop off like <laughs> caps. Like, like Lego pieces. Yes. <laughs> and uh, it kind of rolls into the bushes, and it's kind of howling this silent scream as it, like, the head rolls into the bushes and the body slumps and blood sprays out from the stump of its neck all over you and Mia. I reach, I reach over uh, and uh, like I take the, the, I take the blades of the scimitar and I rub them across my skin again. But this time I'm doing it to like put the blood across my face like Rambo. <laughs> it's and I just have this like X of blood, across, of Sue blood across my face. And then I turn to look for the other one. Grungbo, first blood. Okay, so. <laughs> <laughs> Mia, you no longer have an opponent. Oh, oh uh, real, uh, so the other one that's farther away from me, I still have about, uh, I still have 15 feet of movement. Can I reach him? No, he's up there. Okay, so I will uh, use my bonus, act. I will move up that way and use my bonus action to hide. Yep, okay. Cool. Uh, Mia. That'll be okay. a uh, 19 to hide. Hold on to that number. What are you gonna do? Okay, so uh, what's what enemy is closest to me at this point? At this point, uh, the closest thing to you on the ground would be the vines. Mm -hmm. Okay, so they're still doing something even though she got out of them. Wow. Yeah, they're still like like. It's very Akira, right? Only green instead of bread. As the things kind of like come flowing towards you guys and is trying to grasp at the. A am I pretty close to them? Uh, you're within twenty feet of them. Uh, or 30 okay. feet, so you could uh, uh, move forward and engage. Okay, well, let me know if I can do this. This is what I want to do. Uh, I want to light up a torch, take a big swig of some uh, some alcohol, and just do a big all like, right at the flames. <laughs> oh yeah, all right, um, sure. Um... <laughs> so you spray, like, caustic stuff that you drink uh, through a torch at this creature and it flames out. What I, I want you to do is go ahead and make me uh, a ranged attack roll. Okay. So, I like how he actually drinks alchemist fire as his like. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so what would I add to the 20 or the D20? You're gonna uh, add D your dexterity modifier and um, because you are a uh, uh, Drunkard. Yeah, total. This is this. I mean, you've done this trick like a gajillion times in the bar, so it's like not a big deal. So you're totally okay. proficient in this. I'll, I'll give this to okay. you. So well, so I rolled a 13 plus my dexterity modifier would be, or, yeah, it would be a 16, and then a, with proficiency, I don't know if I would add anything else, but oh yeah, you you could. Or no you, wait, dexterity actually is plus six. So yeah. so you got him. You you totally oh, spray yeah. fire all <laughs> over the vines. Um, <laughs> And uh, go ahead and roll as though you made an unarmed attack for damage. Okay. Um, only we're going to count it as fire damage instead of instead of bludgeoning damage. Okay, that'll be four. Okay, so you spray this this stuff all over it, and uh, oddly, these vines seem resistant to fire damage. Mm. Okay. Uh, well then, I will take uh, I'll take my extra attack on him uh, with my spear. Try Go for it. Cut him. <laughs> oh, that's a crit. Okay. Yay! Nice. Woo! Roll that damage. Roll that beautiful damage. Uh, what? I guess I would assume I'm not able to do two-handed with the spear because I already did. The first thing? Right? Correct, correct. Yeah, you, yeah, got okay. a, you got a torch in your So there. seven. All right, so you, you stab the vines for seven points of damage. Um, and that's going to uh, bring me around to uh, Dot and Con. Okay, so I would like to jump out of the way of the vines. Mm -hmm. And then I would like to use my short bow to... Uh, can I shoot the guy above the last? Absolutely. Yeah. Go ahead and roll to hit. That is a 17 to hit. You got him. 
Sweet, I did a thing. So you bounce away from the vines, turn, take aim, and you feather this Sioux monster. Six damage. And he howls in pain. Um, <laughs> now you have uh, you have extra attack, right? With um, even if it's oh yep, yeah. Yep, that okay. totally works with the short bow too. Sweet, and I do it again. Go for it. Ooh yeah, that's a dirty twenty. Nice. Mm. I should that's a twenty one. <laughs> for seven damage. Okay. Okay, so you shoot him twice with a bow. Um, at this point, uh, Amble kind of peeks out from where he's hiding in his shell and emerges um, from, uh, from the shell. Uh, and uh, he, says a, he says something in a language that none of you understand. And a beam of light opens up from above the jungle canopy and rains down, and it's this cold, shallow, bluish beam, almost like you were standing in the middle of a, of a, uh, like a wave of moonlight, um, and it strikes the vines, um, uh, and the vines start to like shrivel away and burn and and get destroyed by this this radiant energy that's coming from above. Um, and that brings me back around to the monsters. Um, so the vines are shrinking back from the party completely. The Sioux monster, the last one that is um, up there, it's got two arrows sticking out of it and it looks like it's not doing very well, turns and attempts to flee. That's what its action is gonna be. Bangarang, what do you wanna do? Oh, I wanna shoot it right in the butt. Go no. for it. <laughs> You'll flee for me without a <laughs> Uh, a 13? A 13 will hit. Awesome. <laughs> I won't get to take it back. Uh, the 8. Okay. And I'm trying to remember this time, like, as as this guy is leaving, I'm like, oh, I'm going to, you know, get some poison on this arrow. Sure. Uh, so he does have to make the uh, constitution saving throw. He will fail the constitution saving throw. Awesome. So that's another another four poison damage Ow! right in the right butt cheek and he, he away. he's like he's like limping through the trees as he's trying to like make his way along the branches and climb away from you guys um bloop bleep um i will uh get up next to him yes uh, you he's he's pretty far away now can i and do i still have my bonus action can you what uh, do far? i still have my bonus action yeah Okay, yeah. Uh, if I see that Bleep is getting ready to go after this guy, I'm going to offer him help. Okay. I'll, I'll give okay, him so he's basically too far for me to get uh, to get over there, like to actually close the distance to him. You could close the distance. You wouldn't do it this round, though. Uh, so then I will get as close as I can, and I, am, uh, and I will uh, drop the scimitars, uh -huh. let them fall through the trees, and just grab, uh, grab my bow and, and draw back and fire at him. Go for it. Uh, that'll be a... And you have advantage. 19. Okay, so you don't even need to roll damage on that one. You feather him in the back and he kind of jerks back and falls through the trees to hit Crunch on the ground near where the assassin vines are. They grab him up and you can hear this sick, twisted, crunching, and snapping as they pull the body of the Sioux monster up into the assassin vines and begin to consume it. Cool. And I retreat. this yeah. is where we're going to stop for today as Whoa. we have a, a short five minutes left. Um, I, I would you... like to make the note yeah. that I retrieved my scimitars. That arrow is probably gone. The arrow is gone, go... but you, of course you got your scimitars. I'm not worried about that. Um, uh, uh, my name is Chris Lindsay, and this has been a fantastic episode two. I'm looking forward to episode three. You can see me online at Onatrix. Uh, folks, uh, starting with uh, Lauren, why don't you go ahead and tell people where they can see you? You can find me on most of the social medias at OboCrazy on Twitter, OboCrazy other places. You can even find me on this channel tomorrow at three o'clock where I'll be DMing for the Destiny and Doom crowd. And you could also find me DMing for Dungeon Drunks, 
on all the places that podcasts are sold. <laughs> and Sig. Uh, hey, well, I'm Sig Neutron, and you can find me at, I just started Twitch, twitch.tv slash Sig Neutron, which I'll be streaming some Pickle Rick sculpting later today. Um, nice. Other than that, you can find me on Instagram and Twitter at Sig Neutron. Right on. Satine. I am Satine Phoenix, and you can find me um, pretty much everywhere at Satine Phoenix. Um, Sundays, I play Azure on Orphan Echo on Maze Arcana, twitch.tv slash Maze Arcana. Tuesdays, starting next Tuesday, we're premiering Sirens of the Realms, which I'm dungeon mastering with a bunch of, it's a it's all girl bard band, plus a couple other people that they pick up on the way. And uh, when I'm not hanging out with D&D, playing D&D stuff, I'm over at Geek and Sundry. I've got GM tips that come out on Thursdays, um, Tuesdays, if you're on projectalpha.com. And if you are on projectalpha.com, if you're not, you should sign up because we have Sagas of Sunday Dread, and um, it was pretty amazing. So check that out. And it's then true. a bunch of DM Guild stuff. I do a lot of the fun gaming things. So just, you know, go to those things. And Rudy. Uh, I am Rudy Rudenberg. You can find me on all the social medias at Rudy Woot, like you just got loot. Uh, you can also find me here on twitch.tv slash DD today. Actually, a lot of today, because uh, I do this game, and then after this, we'll have another stream uh, at 6 p.m. Uh, PT, which this week will mostly be like an unboxing and maybe playing of some special games that we have that are Dungeons and Dragons themed. And then after that, next week, we'll be starting Fury's Fate, where I'm dungeon mastering uh, the continuation of Fury's Reach, which was Satine and I's uh, co thread uh, game for last season. Um, and you can also find us in the PDF version of One Grung uh, Above that Chris just put out today, and all of that goes to Extra Life. And uh, you can find me and Satine and uh, Chris and other people like that that are Guild Adepts by going to the same website and putting in the Guild Adepts tag and finding all the awesome things that we did uh, to help support the Tomb of Annihilation and maybe other stuff in the future. Awesome. Wednesday is Rudy Day. Wednesday is Rudy <laughs> Day. It's a good day. Thank you very much, folks, for watching. We'll see you next time.